When God gave Moses the second commandment on Mount Sinai, he said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. The commandment was clear not to make any graven images for the purpose of idol worship. Not long after Moses had received this commandment, the Lord warned him that his people had made a molten calf and were worshipping it. The Lord said to him, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. While all believers agree that idol worship is in violation of the commandment, some go so far as to single out the first half of the command and say that it is forbidden to make any graven image, thus including those that are not meant to be worshipped. Today there are graven images all over the world. Various forms of artwork and memorials represent messages of patriotism, religious beliefs, and other important meanings. Others are purely for enjoyment or ornamental purposes. So the question is, do all these graven images break God's commandment? To find out, all we have to do is continue reading in the Bible. We don't even have to go very far. In fact, for the moment, we will stay in the time of Moses. In the book of Numbers, we read that the Israelites were getting bitten by serpents, and many of them were dying. When Moses prayed for help, the Lord said to him, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. The serpent never became sinful until the Israelites began to worship it, as mentioned in Second Kings. In the New Testament, Christ referred to the brass serpent as an example of him being lifted up on the cross. It is interesting that Jesus would compare the brass serpent to his sacrifice for sin. Of course, the brass serpent did not heal the Israelites or keep them alive. It was their faith in God. Likewise today, our faith in Christ's atoning sacrifice keeps us free from spiritual death that comes from sin. On another occasion, the Lord spoke to Moses and told him to build the tabernacle. He gave Moses specific instructions on how to build it. On the curtains of the tabernacle, the Lord told Moses to place artwork of cherubim. The Lord instructed Moses to build a golden candlestick with graven images of almonds and flowers on them. On the hem of Aaron's robe, the Lord said to make pomegranates in between bells. Then we have the sacred Ark of the Covenant, which encased the Ten Commandment tablets. Interestingly enough, God wanted it to be crowned with cherubim, graven of pure gold, and placed in the Holy of Holies of the tabernacle. God even told Moses that he would commune with him from between the two golden cherubim. During the reign of David, the Lord revealed that he wanted a temple to be built in Jerusalem to replace the tabernacle.
just as with Moses, the Lord gave David specific instructions on how his temple should be built. Later, David delivered the Lord's pattern for the temple to his son Solomon, as the Lord directed him to do so. Solomon built the temple according to the Lord's instructions. The temple had golden cherubim graved on its walls. The walls also had palm trees and flowers carved in it. The Ark of the Covenant was placed in the new Holy of Holies. Giant statues of golden cherubim were sculpted to overshadow the Ark of the Covenant. Numerous pomegranates were graven on the pillars of the temple. The pillars also had lilies carved on them. He made a molten sea. And the molten sea rested upon the backs of twelve oxen. Now again, there were graven cherubim, palm trees, and even lions found within the temple. These were all graven images of things that are either in heaven above or on earth beneath. And although they had religious affiliation or symbolism, they were not idols. From scripture, we know that the Lord accepted the temple Solomon built him. Shortly after Solomon offered his dedicatory prayer, the Lord told him that he had chosen and sanctified the temple and that his eyes and heart would perpetually be there. In conclusion, God does not tolerate the worship of graven images. He does, however, approve of wholesome, non-idolatrous artwork. In fact, it is scripturally evident that he has a certain appreciation for it. 